word of god as uh, uh, this thought came to my mind about uh, the mystery of the mercy of god that's the topic that i'm touching today in a very brief uh, way from the uh, the book of jonah the mystery of the mercy of god uh, you know god is a god of compassion his mercies never fails uh just because of that mercy that we are all alive today amen when as we quickly go through the book of jonah i'll be reading certain verses uh first of all chapter 1 verse 2 i'm reading where the mercy of god is uh, urging us to cry out for nations somebody can read that jonah chapter 1 verse 2 where we find that you know can, can somebody read that okay ee porippittu mahanagaramaga ninaveyilekku chennu adinu virodhamaayi prasangikka avare drushtha ende sannidhiyil ettirikkunu yeah you see uh, in english it is written like this rise go to nineveh that great city and cry out against it it is uh, even though the word preaching or sharing is mentioned it's crying out against it so the first thing that i would like to mention here is the mercy of god urges all of us to go out and preach or share to all the nations amen you know jeremiah when we read in 91 don't need to read he says like this oh that my head were waters and my eyes are a fountain a fountain of tears his head were filled with only waters and his eyes a fountain of tears that means he will shed every tear for the people of god for his people cry out for the people what makes a person what makes a child of god to cry out for nations or cry out for the people it is the mercy and the compassion of god urges and compels a child of god to cry out and to be ready to shed tears for those who are perishing all right isaiah says like this in chapter 6 verse 5 I am living in the midst of people who are who have unclean lips. I myself I am not clean and I am living in the midst of people who are who have unclean lips. So Lord cleanse me forgive me forgive my people and he stands on behalf of the people crying out. Amen. So if you see the word mercy the meaning of mercy mercy means it is forgiveness. Mercy means forgiveness. in hebrew it is ahava means god's enduring love for israel ahava is the word which is used to and uh, rekam is the word which used it means um or there is a maternal connection between god and human beings devathinum manusharkum oru veliya connection und that is how a child is connected to the mother the same way the idea which is given is that God has a great connection with human beings. Psalm number 85 when we see when we read it is mentioned mercy and peace have met together mercy and peace that's two aspects of how God is dealing with human being mercy that is forgiving and extending his compassion at the same time establishing peace among the peaceless community and then in the same psalm we read righteousness of and peace have kissed together righteousness what is acceptable in the presence of god and what is from god that is peace are kissing together and the next word which is used for mercy is chesed is the word that tells about the steadfast loyalty of our god steadfast loyalty of our god in other words you see being faithful to god's god's will cannot be changed and he is steadfastly faithful to what he is in other words because he is faithful he is extending his compassion to the whole human being psalm number 136 when we read halel is the word which means praise is mercy endureth forever amen 
Man may be sinning. Man may be falling far short of the glory of God. Man may be involved in his own realm. But in the midst of that, his mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. Thank God. Because of his mercy, I am alive. Because of his mercy, many of us are alive. In Gospels, when we see Jesus is the face of mercy. Jesus is the face of, mer face of mercy. So in other words, practicing mercy means forgiveness is extended. Mercy fuels compassion. Because God is merciful, he extends his compassion to his people. So mercy is an expression of love, kindness, and favor. So it is the love, kindness, and the favor of God which is urging us, compelling us, compelling us to pray and to cry in the presence of God for nations or the people. His mercy forces us to cry for people and for the nations to repent. What is that? To come back to the Savior. So that's where the church is placed. God is raising his church. God is raising his people to cry. And that's where we find in the book of Jonah also. God is raising Jonah. Jonah, you, Jonah is representing the church today. Jonah is representing us today. That when people are on the verge of perishing or destruction. God is asking us to go, to go and cry over the nations or preach over the nations or share over the forgiveness of Jesus Christ or forgiveness of God to those nations. Amen. But what did Jonah do? He arose and he flees to Dashish, which is somewhere different. And what God's plan was, that was to the place called Nineveh. Can God keep quiet about it? He cannot keep quiet about it. He will send a great wind. He will send anything and everything to change the situation. Why? Because God's heart is burdened for his creation human beings. As I said already, that word uh, that, uh, you know, how the uh, Rakamim or Rekem uh, um, where there is a man. His image and God, God's heart is burdened for his creation. And he will do anything and everything to turn the hearts of people to cry to him so that his forgiveness will be extended and he will relent from his wrath and save the human beings from the destruction or the verge of perishing. Amen. So Number one, the first thing that I would like to mention this morning is mercy of God is urging and compelling people to cry over the nations. Amen. These days, as a church, we have been crying for the nations. Hallelujah. We have been looking forward to God to forgive the people of God, people who are in sinful life and asking God to heal and that's what Jonah was supposed to do. And the church is supposed to do the same thing today. And we are doing, and all over, the people of God are involved in doing that. Amen. So it's not because we are prayerful. It's not because we are great. But it is the mercy which fuels the compassion of God and involves us in praying for the people. And let us continue to pray for the nations before us, even for our nation and for different nations, that God's mercy and compassion will save them before they are getting destroyed. A war couldn't kill this many people, but the pandemic is killing thousands and hundreds of people. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. And in the midst of that, church has a responsibility. You are called has the responsibility to cry over the people who are getting destroyed. And the second thought that I would like to mention from this is, mercy also gives an opportunity for the disobedient preacher to come back. Amen. Right? 
You see, come back repenting. We know the story of Jonah. In, in God's mercy, God has called Jonah to preach. It's not because of the greatness of Jonah or me or anyone who is preaching today. God is actually full of mercy and he has appointed or he has called you and me to preach. And is you know, the church to preach, the church to share the mission that God wants. Until we come to the terms of God in crying and preaching and sharing what God wants us, he will pressurize us. You know, he wants his commission of sharing his grace and forgiveness, his plan of redemption to the perishing souls. He wants us, maybe Jonah, maybe me, maybe anyone, maybe the whole church to strengthen his people, to declare his oracle, to correct his people, to edify his people, to rebuke his people, to build his people, to confirm us to the image in which he wants us to look like. Hallelujah. And that's where you and I are. You know, but Jonah or the preacher or the servant of God did not obey him. What to do? God threw him that. You know, he, he tells himself that through, 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 Throw me into the sea. Chapter 1 verse 15. Thank God. God is pressurizing. God is working. God will not allow us. And he will not allow us to go as we want. He will pressurize to any extent. So that we will be confirming and fulfilling his commission in our lives. To save the perishing, perishing souls. But thank God he's not a God who destroys the church. He does not destroy his people. He does not destroy a man in the church. What we read here, he sends a, a fish to swallow uh, Jonah. Hallelujah. Amen. In spite of the danger, in spite of all the you know things which happens, God is also concerned and he sends the great fish to swallow him. And we find that Jonah is... Uh, preserved. In other words, uh, he is protected from the destruction of death so that he will be able to fulfill the commission of God. Let me assure you, the mercy of God is time and again working on us, uh, reminding us, uh, pressurizing us uh, in spite of the things that is happening in our lives uh, so that we will be able to cry out, share his word, Church, we have a responsibility in the midst of the destruction. The people who are going to be destroyed eternally away from God. And they will not have a chance to hear the gospel. That's where the church stands with the mission of uh, proclaiming the gospel. You know, there is a time that God is giving to the church. That is, that is to Jonah himself that he is crying out in the midst of from the mouth, from the uh, the stomach of belly of the fish, uh, and he is crying and praying and worshiping God. Thank God. Let not the church go through such stages. Amen. Let not anyone go through such stages because uh, that is a very uh, terrible situation. Amen. Let us understand the mercy of God and the compassion of God is pressing us today that we take the mission of God to share, to cry, and to preach the gospel to the nations and those who are getting, you know, he is crying, praying, and worshiping God. And then when the time is over, God is declaring to the fish to vomit himself, vomit him, Jonah to the dry land. Chapter 2, verse 10 that we read. A lesson to be learned for those who are not obeying. Whether it is a preacher or it is a child of God, it doesn't matter. Whether it is the, the, you know, the people of God, or it is the child of God, everyone has a responsibility to obey, not to rebel against the plans of God, but to come back to repent before him so that it will be easier for us to fulfill the commission that God has given us this morning.
Amen. So mercy it gives us an opportunity for the disobedient preacher or disobedient church or disobedient people to come back repenting. Thank God. God's mercy is so great that he allows us to come back repenting. Hallelujah. Whoever repents, there is an opportunity once again to share what God has entrusted in our hearts. Our hearts are bubbling. Our hearts are heavy with the compassion and the mercy of God. Do you realize that this morning? Church, do you realize that? Amen. Are we just carrying only the burden or are we crying and sharing the mission of God, the heart of God to those who are perishing this morning? Amen. Thank God for the walls are being broken these days that even the children and all those who are well-versed are using the media to declare who God is and what God is doing through them these days. Hallelujah. I believe it is a revolution and it is also the responsibility of the church to use that. Amen. Number three, the third thing that I would like to mention is God's mercy makes nations also to repent. Amen. You see, it's, it's not only uh, it is urging us to pray or to preach, urging us or giving an opportunity for a preacher to come back repenting. It is also giving us an opportunity for the nations to repent. Chapter 3, when we read, second time God is speaking to uh, no, uh, Jonah, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it that message, I tell you. Amen. The message was already revealed, but there was a confirmation of the message that God is giving. Go and share the message that I am going to tell you. And here is the message that we find. He goes around that big city or the big town for three days, walks around and preacher saying that in verse 4, Jonah began to enter the city on the first day's walk. Then he cried out. That's again the word cried out it is mentioned. Cried out is the word which is mentioned. And preached and said, what does he say? Yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Hallelujah. A cry goes before the preaching. Amen. A cry goes before preaching. So any preaching or any message will be effective when people of God cry and pray before God. Yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. What happens there? We find, uh, you see, uh, you know, we find that in chapter 3, verse 9, we find that the whole nation, all the people, you see, was, who can tell if God will turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger so that we may not perish? Then God saw the works that they turned from their evil way and God relented from the disaster that he had said he would bring upon them and he did not do it. Thank God the message was so powerful. Hallelujah. The cry was so powerful. Amen. Oh, it was, it was turning the hearts of the people. Hallelujah. Thank God the message of Jesus Christ, the message of the kingdom, the message of repentance, the message about eternity can change the people's heart from destruction and perishing. Hallelujah. It doesn't take much time to convince them because the, the heart of God is there. The mercy of God is there. The compassion of God is there. And he is working on it. Hallelujah. It's our responsibility to preach. And we find that uh, they repented of their sin and their evil way. God relented from the disaster that he had said uh, he would bring upon and he did not do it. Hallelujah. Even today, there is the great message of salvation that has been given to you and me, given to Jonah, given to church, that if we don't repent and come back, he is going to destroy. But at the same time, when we repent, he relents of the disaster and uh, he saves the mankind and his forgiveness, his compassion is available even today. But we find Jonah was not happy about it. Chapter 4 verse 1. And it, it, it displeased Jonah exceedingly and he became angry. Hallelujah. Is there 
a chance for us to get angry? That's a question, right? Now, I believe that in that position, as a child of God, as a servant of God, he or she or anybody has no right to be angry because it was only the responsibility of him or me or the church to preach the gospel, that's all. Preach what God tells, that's all. What God does is because of his compassion, because of the forgiveness, because of the grace of God that he is willing to forgive anybody who uh, asks or turn away from the evil things of the world. What is he praying? He's praying a very selfish prayer. He prays to the Lord, Lord, I knew that, I knew that you are going to do, do it. You know, I would have stayed in my place in Tarshish, but that's where the preaching of the gospel's compulsion comes. You know, many people ask, what is there? Uh, there is a predestination theory, right? That we are predestined, so those who are predestined only will be saved. No, it's not like that. There is a commission that is, which is based on the words of Jesus, Matthew Gospel, chapter 28, that, uh, what is that? That go all over the world, even to the end of the world. I have given you authority to go and preach and teach, make them disciples, baptize them in the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's where the responsibility of the church or the preacher or of Jonah or me comes into a real uh, effect that he has to go. For I know that you are a gracious God and merciful God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness, one who relents from doing harm. Therefore, please take away my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Amen. God's grace is so huge. God's forgiving. Amen. Power is so great. God's compassion is so great that even he is willing to forgive a nation. Hallelujah. When a nation repents before God. And I believe that it is time for nations to repent before God. And it is our responsibility to pray and preach the gospel we find. in, you know, what we find as he prayed, Jonah is telling that he wants his life to be taken. Will God answer such prayers? God cannot answer such prayer. And there is no need to get angry over things what God is doing because our human understanding is so limited that uh, we are unable to understand the manifold work of God, grace of God, the compassion of God, all oh, the connections that he has with the human beings who are created in image of God. Whatever language they speak, wherever they are, whatever color they are. But God is compassionate about every soul because humans are the crown of God's creation. Hallelujah. And he wants us, amen, to, wants us to preach that gospel. We find even Jonah the preacher or God's servant goes to an extreme extent. Verse 5. So Jonah went out of the city, sat on the east side of the city, there he, there he made himself a shelter and sat under the shade till he might see what would become of the city. What was he thinking? God would destroy the whole place and he was waiting for the destruction of the whole city. Can a servant of God think like that? Can a child of God think and see the destruction of God to take place like that? That's not what God wants the heart of a condition of anybody. Amen. God wants to share his heart. God wants to share the heart throb of God. What God likes that he wants his servants and his church and his people of God to share that burden. We cannot be petty. We cannot be so small. We cannot be selfish. We cannot be angry about what God is doing in this world. We have to only marvel and appreciate and thank God for what he is doing in this world. Hallelujah. In the midst of that, all this destruction, I tell you, God is preparing his own. Hallelujah. God is preparing the church. God is making his gospel to us. Oh, and more reaching to people. And they are responding to the gospel. We find God is not 
just carried away by one servant of God or one child of God who is so ridiculously thinking about and waiting for the destruction of that great city. But then God can send a blessing also in just a quick time. Amen. You see, when he is waiting there in a small place, God is blessing him by raising up a tree for his shadow. Right? You know, many times what happens is, you know, when God gives shelter, when God gives blessings, when God gives protection, when God gives prosperity quickly, that is from the aspect of his provision that he cares about you. He doesn't want because you are a preacher of the gospel or you are a blessed servant of the gospel because you follow the Lord faithfully or executing his commandment. The prosperity has come in you. That does not guarantee that the prosperity will continue. His provision will continue for a long time. It takes just a moment for God to remove that also. Your health, your provision, your providence, your protection, whatever, your blessings, God can just remove just like that. In one night we find everything goes away. Hallelujah. In other words, what we experience in this world is temporary. The shade, the shelter, the blessings, the provision, the protection, the, the beauty that we have and all the wealth that we have is only from the hands of God because we are standing for God. We are carrying the gospel. Oh, we are standing to obey the commandments of God. That is one aspect of his provision. But don't be ever cherished and be always rejoicing only in that and forgetting to take the burden of God in your lives. God will remove it in no time. Amen. In chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, we find everything is taken away. Amen. Our losses, our comforts, or any damages which happens in our lives cannot change our priorities. That is God and his commandments and his words. Amen. Many a times when things unseen happen in our lives, when a loss of damage is taking place, when our reputation goes away, when things that we were enjoying all of a sudden is taken away for no uh, real explanation that we can give, you know, we also close ourselves and then think that, no, no, I will not worship God. <laughs> I will not do what God wants. No, the priority that God has put in our hearts cannot be taken away. Amen. God is longing us longing our hearts to in chapter 4 verse 11 we find that and should I not pity in any way the great city in which are more than 120,000 persons who cannot discern between the right hand and the left and much livestock you see verse 10 you have pity on the plant for which you have not labored nor made it grow which came up in a night and perished in a night let me illustrate this like this. All the blessings in this world are just like that tree which grew up in one night and which perishes in one night. Everything that we enjoy in this world, the, the beauty that we have, the good health that we have, the job that we have, the prosperity that we have, thank God, God has given it. And he will make it possible in one night. In other words, in a short time. But let us not spend our time only in that. Uh, let us spend our time, uh, amen, in, this, in the heart of God or in the concerns of God. That's what God is trying to end, the, end there in verse 11. Will I not have pity over in any way where 120,000 people should perish just like that? Are you, is your concern about your blessings and your protection that you never labored, which came for you is more important than all these people who are to go through this destruction. That's what God is trying to share today, this morning. God wants his mercy to be flowing 
through the nations hallelujah and he can change the destiny of your nation and he can make a nations to repent very quickly i tell you let me conclude number 1 the mercy of god is urging and compelling us to pray and cry over nations it is our responsibility to cry 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 over the nations lord hallelujah it's not because of me but because of the mercy and the compassion of god lord save the nations hallelujah the second thing i mentioned is mercy gives an opportunity even for those who are disobedient even for a preacher even for a church even for a child of god to come back repenting that he gives an opportunity to so that we will understand if we don't come back in terms with god he will send anything and everything i tell you it could be a mighty wind it could be something which will topple all our plans and our progress and we will have to go through a dark time until we come surrendering ourselves before that god amen worshiping asking forgiveness and repenting that he can use us once again and god's mercy is compelling even nations to repent hallelujah and that's what we are going to see in the days to come hallelujah i tell you amen the time is coming and it is very very soon that nations has to repent otherwise it's going to get destroyed hallelujah and the message is getting faster oh and every venue is opened for the message of the gospel for the message of the kingdom to reach with all its speed hallelujah why not we join in that speedy bandwagon hallelujah to reach out with the message of god that is the gospel of salvation the gospel of repentance the gospel that will save the mankind you as an individual we as a family we as a church we have a greater responsibility today may the lord strengthen us to execute that hallelujah all those who are crying all those who are weeping your tears are not in vain hallelujah as you pray oh, earnestly pray hallelujah shed your tears before god god is watching amen your tears will be seen hallelujah it will be answered all those who are not repented still struggling with the call of god or with the mission of god you can come back repent amen and take up the responsibility go with the heart of god so that we will be able to share what he wants us hallelujah nations it is also a plea that you come back may the lord give you grace to repent god bless us through this words shall we pray